Most people think of this image when they remember the protests in Tiananmen Square 25 years ago. But I have so many more memories. And I can't stop thinking about rickshaw drivers. Here's why. Wait. Wait. Together with my wife, Cheryl, I ran the New York Times Bureau in Beijing in 1989. Long before the protests started, we spoke often with Chinese who wanted a better life, who hated corruption. They had no clue that the country was about to be convulsed by conflict. The student-led demonstrations began small in April 1989. They snowballed in a way nobody anticipated. People's lives had dramatically improved, but the protesters said they wanted not just rice, but also rights. I covered the rising tension, the shoving matches between demonstrators and police. And then on the night of June 3rd to 4th, the government sent in the army to take back Tiananmen Square. I was in the crowd that the soldiers opened fire on. I saw kids murdered for dreaming of a freer country. What I remember most was the heroism of the rickshaw drivers. These were peasants from the countryside. They risked their lives to pick up the dead and rush the wounded to hospitals. Those rickshaw drivers wouldn't have been able to defy democracy, but they were dying for it. Since then, the Communist Party has raised incomes, education levels, health standards. Yet China's growing middle class still yearns for more political participation, which reminds me of the words of the great Chinese writer Lu Xun. He said, lies written in ink cannot obscure facts written in blood. I'll bet that someday there'll be a memorial in Tiananmen Square for those who died that night. I hope it's a statue of a rickshaw driver. <laughs>